Hello, welcome to the Alan Chronicles. My name is James David. And in today's video, I would like to talk about my collection of El Aglonemas, which is of the red variety. Basically, these particular ones are known as Chinese evergreen when it's of the green types. But this particular one is slightly more fussier and slow growing. And today, I would like to talk about my tips on how I care for them. First thing first, normally these particular types of plants are very slow growing. Hence, they will just be as it is for a few months. And most cases, when they are sold in, in nurseries, they are quite small. What I have done here is because of lack of space in my garden, I have actually com compressed and condensed them in few pots here. As you can see over here, I've actually have layered the flower pots together so this actually maximize my garden space and also it gives a very beautiful compact look when they are in a combo you may ask me why didn't i not plant all of them in one flower pot i find that one that is once that i place all of them in one flower pot it somehow finds that one plant overwhelms the sensitive ones and the ones that is actually sensitive has been overpowered in a way that because a plant being small it requires to be in a small pot when you overpot it chance of it chances of it to become stressed and they may just die and knowing my garden being so compact i may not able to attend to it within a week's time and when i check on it the plant is gone so in a way this actually helps especially in the cases where we, when it comes to aglonemas never overpot them plant them according to the plant size so as the plant grows bigger then you repot it to a bigger pot this will ensure that tight root growth will actually help the plant to grow much more bushy and healthy now these are the ones that i've actually collected this is more of the pink variety this is oh, this is a red variety okay what i have done here is that i have used a chopstick and i poked it here for stability so in this way the pot would not fall off accidentally if something knocked over so let me see if i can put it over okay so it's not so bad something about this particular one this is actually a very new breed it's mm, it's only now in the market and about a year ago if i can say and it's actually very finicky and fussy plant that is something that you need to take note of it will only turn red depending on the number the much of light that you receive so in case you are placing it in a very shaded area they will be very much on the green tones so the redder they are is because the much of light that you receive so normally i'll put it on the morning sun like over here so this this actually helps the plant to receive as much as possible because the evening sun is way too hot and it actually can burn the plant so you can see over here i actually place a lot of support and so that it actually keeps upright i may have to top up more soil on it but i will do so later okay these are the things that i want to mention now when it comes to combo plants you can actually uh, add in any other plants that you like like over here i have actually uh, placed in anthurium plant just to give some visual display and for spacing because lacking of space so basically i may have to trim off all this spent flowers and leaf and you can just pinch it off also it's not so difficult again uh, I, I need to top this up so that it will be stable okay show you this is another aglonema but this is of a tall variety so it's not a bushy type and i can i can do this as placing one so eventually what's going to happen is over years 
the new shoots will be appearing from here where there is available of space but this big portion of it will be actually taken by these plants also when it comes to aglonema you can actually place in uh, types of Daphnebachias somehow there is a variety that is a crossbreed between aglonema and Daphnebachia and they do really have a very beautiful color contrast when they are kept together it will not really be so visible and it may not be so showy if it's just one or two leaves but when they are placed in a compact growing position they do really look lovely you can see over here it is sort of like a kind of visual display which is unique and finally this particular one okay let me remove this and see so they do need support because if not they will fall apart and i placed in some pebbles just to give some foundation for it and this is the uh, aglonema of the big variety you can see the roots are already exposed when when removing the leaves do take out whatever excess that that means uh, some people just trim off the leaves over here let's say for example that this is spent you trim off over here eventually this whole thing will turn yellow and it'll be very unslightly so the best thing is just snap off from the whole thing and it'll be much more clean cleaner in appearance and look and also you will avoid the fungal problem if you are growing them indoors in a in a in a bedroom or or of living area so in that way you won't have any fungus problem and you will also avoid unnecessary pest problems or even root rot problems so basically this is how it appears to be oh this is another one is actually going so I, I i can make a decision whether i want to trim this off and leave it i might do so later after the video so look over here it, ha it has a very nice display can you see it so if given the choice we do so in a way of combination of aglonemas with uh, Daphnebachia, also known as Dumpkin in a common name, and they will actually give you a nice one. When it comes to Daphnebachia, there are two types. One is of the larger variety and one is a miniature variety. Use the miniature variety so that the plant will look very compact. Okay, on another note of caution, be very careful when handling aglonemas especially the leaves and do not do so on when the pot is wet or on a rainy day when the leaves are, are wet that means it's like if you want to do any pruning or trimming or repotting do so before watering it or not on a rainy day because the they do have some very strong toxicity on it toxicity on it where uh, they can actually cause rashes and skin irritation so if you're the type that having sensitive skin uh, do do very be caution about it or even handle it with gloves that will actually will help or uh, the other factor here is uh, the, i would rather say it like it's more of uh, see no touch plant <laughs> that way you know you see it, you enjoy it but don't touch it so it, it, the the most important thing is to consider is uh, grow it in a place where you don't accidentally brush it you know don't let your your leg touch on it or you know, that kind of thing so you can put it on a shelf or somewhere very far away that you can see it but it doesn't harm you so basically most of my aglonemas are of from a distance and uh, when they are actually kept in a distance their visual display is very strong to look at and they are very beautiful and though aglonemas are very very hardy plants they do have problems 
if they are actually receiving less light for example if they are not receiving good bright light uh, they do have uh, pest problems especially scale insect and mealybug do attack them when the plant is weak so adequate bright light actually helps them and do also watch out for ants because they are the ones it's more of like a culprit that brings in all this pest and farm on the pond the leaves so checking on them time to time to see if any infestation of mealybug and scale insect will be very important because if they if they are infected then it's going to be a, a big problem handling it because they don't normally go 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 easy uh, and then if you don't want really want to apply strong pesticide if they are indoors you know it, it can also infect you and even the organic ones can be a little bit more expensive and it's difficult to eradicate so the way that to handle it is check on them on a weekly basis and just see and when watering do water also on the leaf just to give them a little bit of a wash and so it, it will not be uh, problematic later on if they do not uh, pest problems or any of those sorts when it comes to propagation basically they are very easy plants uh, there's few ways you can actually do it one of it is that they may give out uh, suckers out of here the new plants a like plantlet appearing based on the soil mix if there are if it's heavily uh, fertilized with compost and wormy compost chances of them to sprout out from a root ball is very high but also it depends on the breed the more colorful and hybrid types it'll take much more longer time but however it's not impossible because uh, in comparison to so many other species this particular ones can be very hardy so it's more on a depending on the fertilizer that is being used that they can actually make them grow a lot and you can actually use cuttings and one of the ways is that to look for the nodes it's similar like most aeroids uh, it's like two to three nodes and you trim it off here and place it in water so there will be a root growth the aerial roots will might appear and in the water and you can start a new collection uh, as i mentioned that these are slow growing plants and uh, something can go wrong if you do it wrongly let's say if there's a root rot and if it's a fungus problem and the whole plant can die so i normally don't do that i just leave it as it is and just let nature take its course where it will fill up the whole pot and from there i will just separate the shoots and replant them knowing these particular ones especially the color type where if you notice uh, when everything is red or everything is pink it will be more of a slow growing type in comparison to the green types so this is a lot of green a little bit of red so these are more hardy because one thing is for sure is because they are able to make chlorophyll and their own food so it will be more hardy in that context even for this this is a bigger type but when it comes to these types it will be very slow and they can be very finicky in a way that if it's exposed to bright hot sun they can even burn and if it's like lack of sun and it turn green so a little bit uh how do you say fussy so you may have to give a proper lighting that's not too hot not too shaded bright light good feeding and that kind of thing it actually helps the planet So basically I want to show to you here is one of the tips is that what they call pot stacking. I actually stack up the pots here. So you can see that I have three, four, five flower pots in us. 
uh, in a stack and it's only going to take this size of it so when I actually do this as a layering what actually happens is that when you see over here it looks beautiful and I can just put it at the corner and it actually fits very well for my visual display and my liking in my garden space so you may just not necessarily have to stick with aglonema and Daphne Baker. You can even use uh, anthurium plants. I have actually experimenting on it because I wanted to have a visual display where it's also a dark leaf, but this turned out to be much more greener. So you can try out with a darker variety of egg anthurium plants or even sismus colitis this type and uh, even the any of the pattern types that you actually have you can actually place it and see how it fares maybe even uh, philodendron which is of a pattern leaves so in a way when you stack it up it will actually give a beautiful visual display do take note that always try to secure that it would not accidentally knock off so normally I just use this kind of chopsticks and poke it so that it will stay put and that is very essential because it can get knocked down accidentally and you have to repot them with all the soil and that plant can get shocked if they are disturbed. I just want to show to you a quick display of other aglonemas that I actually have. This is the green variety known as commonly very much known as Chinese evergreen and you can see why in that this is actually two tone in a way you can actually see that they are very hardy and i don't really have to do so much about it not much of care is actually needed and it's actually beside my water pond so in a way they do receive a very good humidity factor and i don't really do much care and even watering once a week because i don't want it to get too wet but it does look good with syngonium and a colored leaves plants so you can see a little bit of that this is more of experiment so it's not really really happening and a little bit of that uh, that's of a dracenia species I really can't figure out their names so I, I just wanted to give that kind of compact thing and agglomerate lemas are very much more fall into the category of uh, all-purpose plant in a way you can use it a lot to do with any of the multicolored and combo plants and this particular one do go so well with so many varieties of course you have seen my uh, vertical wall and I find that even that they are very hardy because they can handle light watering that is cascading from the top to the bottom on the wall here i normally just spray water and they are also open to the element of sun and rain and they just do so well and fine however they do not grow bushy so it's always one singular plant but however i'm happy with it because what i'm actually looking for is the colors that actually brightens up my garden space Do take note that each aglonemas are different in their own types. Like for example, this particular one will turn much more redder if it's very much exposed to bright sunlight. But this particular one is actually more in a shaded area. So you do see more green with a red border. I will show it to you how it appears to be when it's exposed to hot bright sunlight. As you can notice over here, this is actually receiving a real bright sunlight but I also have casualties where actually having some burns, horrible burns. Uh, I may have, but this is very much experimental. I just want to see. Even though I can actually trim off all the burns and it will accumulate, accumulatize back to this uh, hot sun condition. You can see it clearly. Uh, but I'm planning to report this but I'm just seeing how it fares. You can see the red is very much like a chili red and that is the sunlight that it actually receives. So in a way, these are very adaptable and easy to care for 
it just on if you can know the right conditions for it this is another variety more of a darker version and i find that as much as possible i find that they are very hardy and not finicky in comparison to so many other plants when it comes to the colored leaves type so as i want to show to you that you can actually do a combo with them and they just do so well and they are not fussy in a way that they don't show tantrum if they are not receiving light as much if they are overlap together with other plants like certain plants if they are compact together they don't do so well and because they are in tight neat space they tend to rot easily or show tantrum that contacts so in a way i find that when it comes to aglonemas they do give the visual display of power compact colors especially the red ones so if you are finding that if you have everything green to put in uh, aglonema which of a red variety or even some borders or what to give that punch kind of a effect in the monotone green garden also note that when it comes to daphnebrachia and also aglonemas you can actually cultivate them in as a cutting and place them in water for many months they will uh, produce a lot of primary and secondary roots but do not keep them too long in water because they will not grow and uh, they may also start to lack nutrients and may turn yellow and leggy so in a way in a temporal moment you can actually keep them for one to three months but do ensure to change the water as, as often as possible and try to propagate them in a soil media because if not you might lose the plant so anyway i've come to the end of my video i hope you enjoyed my my tips on how i stacks and uh, cultivate aglonemas and cuddle plants if you can please do click like and subscribe my channel and do follow up on my playlist on all the other plants that i actually have in my plant care and if you can uh, do check on other plant uh, other plant care tips which i have incorporated in my channel and if you're here new here for the first time do check do check on my uh, my plants in my gardens in my channel and see if if you, you find it interesting and i would really like to invite you in my journey in my garden space which is very much on a tropical zone in a tight space garden so in a way these are my experiences and tips on how i care for them and in a, in a way of trial and error and what i have learned so far which i would like to share for your viewing pleasure so see you again in my next video hope you enjoyed the show take care and have a lovely day bye